What's up, Internet? I'm back with another Before Eternity review. This time we're going to be taking a look at the Star Wars The Vintage Collection, The Mandalorian, Axe Woves, Cosca Reeves, and The Death Watch Mandalorian. Now, first off, I just want to say that I know the video quality and that Republic Commando Black Series video I just did was pretty bad. I don't know what's going on. Some of the videos I do are like pretty decent looking and then other ones just look like absolute garbage like the Republic Commando video. I'm still trying to figure it out. This one looks better so far, uh, so I guess I'll just keep going. I would also like to acknowledge that I know the Vintage Collection Death Watch Mandalorian is like a pretty old figure at this point and everyone knows about it, but it's one of my favorite Vintage Collection figures, probably one of my favorite Star Wars figures. I just want an excuse to talk about it and since both of these other newer figures here are pretty much related to it, uh, they're from the same show, they're both Death Watch. Um, I just wanted to get a chance to talk about the Death Watch Mandalorian because I love it so much. Of course, Axe Woves and Cosca Reeves are the newest figures here. They're both Target exclusives. I just picked them up recently from the Target website. And I'm pretty excited to have them just because it's more Mandalorians and I love Mandalorians because they look cool. And these figures look pretty good and they are pretty good. Uh, but first, before we get on to them, let's go ahead and take a look at the card backs. First up, as the newest figure here, we do have Axe Woves. This is what his uh, card back image looks like. It looks pretty good. Of course, got the yellow name pill, Mandalorian logo. Let's focus on this a bit better. Uh, that is a nice looking photo. I believe that's from, because uh, it's obviously from season two. I forgot which episode exactly, but it's when they're on the boat, I think. Here we can see the rest of the figures in the wave. I think the next vintage collection figures that I'm going to get are going to be Bo-Katan and the Migs Mayfeld and Din Djarin in that tank driver disguise from Morak. Uh, I still don't have Bo-Katan for some reason, but I will get her eventually. Then we got the Vintage Collection logo, all the crap at the bottom, and VC number 228. Then we got Casca Reeves, blue name pill, really nice looking image on the card right there that looks really cool. We got the Mandalorian logo. Turn it over onto the back. We got the rest of the figures in the wave, which is basically the same image from the Axe Woves card back. We got VC number 230 and all that stuff at the bottom. And finally, there's the Death Watch Mandalorian. This one has the, my favorite card back out of the three here. I just think that image looks so cool with the sparks flying and everything. It looks like he's got his arm up. Maybe like he's signaling to something or someone. Uh, it's just a, it's a really cool image. And of course, orange name pill. Logo up at the top with the name. And turn it over on the back. We got the rest of the figures in the wave. Uh, which I, I did get Phoenix Shand recently, actually. Um, I don't know if I'm going to make a video on her or not, though. Uh, but it is a really great figure. I enjoy it a lot. And then it's also VC219. All right, so let's take a look at Axe Wolves. I will say before I get on to the negatives that this is a great looking figure all the way around. The paint apps and the sculpts just look really great. Uh, it's, of course, using or uh, reusing that Death Watch Mandalorian mold. Which is a really great mold. Here's what the two of them look like together. As you can see, very similar, just different paint deco and different helmets. With accessories, you have that small pistol that's not going to focus. And that's really the best view that I can get of it right now. It doesn't seem to have any paint apps except for... Well, actually, no. I mean, maybe there's a lighter color of gray on there, it looks like. But it's not painted brown uh, at the grip like the one with the Death Watch Mandalorian is. And that one pistol is the only weapon that this figure comes with. You, of course, get his jetpack, which does look slightly different from the Death Watch Mandalorian. The lighter blue jetpack is the one that comes with the Death Watch Mandalorian, and the darker blue is the one that comes with Axe Woves. They're both basically the same thing, just different shades of blue. And, of course, on the back, we get that peg hole that's kind of like a semicircle. Just tabs in like that, and it's all good. It does uh, move a little bit. Uh, but it should it should be fine. It stays on there pretty well. You can also take his pistol and put it in the holster right there. And it's finally focused. And here's just a close-up view of the figure so you can get a good look at the armor, all the paint apps and everything. He's got a bunch of scratches and paint wearing off and stuff like that. It looks really good. Looks better than most Black Series. Whoa. I am having a little bit of trouble talking, uh, but it does look better than most Black Series figures. Um, I don't know, man. Everything just looks really good on this. 
I just really love this kind of like basic Mandalorian armor design that they've come up with the new show and everything. I just think it's like a really cool armor design. Then in terms of articulation, uh, we can get it to go up that high. We got the elbow that can go uh, like that, and it can go backwards even more, which is just weird. You get the whole 360 thing on there. Of course, no butterfly joint because it is a vintage collection figure. Um, with the wrists, you can get it to go up and down, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's just being really stiff right now, but that is the joint that can go up and down like so. And then the other wrist actually has the same kind of joint on there. It's just the up and down. With the head articulation, with the helmet on, you can get him to look down that much, up, well, that's just kind of weird. You can get him to look up that much without his chin poking out. Then you still get some tilt going on there. When we take the helmet off, you can get more, well, actually, can you get more tilt? It's not really wanting to do any tilt, uh, which is kind of annoying, but you can get it to look down a bit, get it to look up. It's actually not doing too much with the helmet off, which is kind of weird. In the torso area, we of course got that normal ball joint in there that can go down uh, that much. That isn't a very good view of it. It can go down this much. It doesn't do too much. It's kind of prohibited by the vest right there, but it can go back a pretty decent amount. And then you of course got the tilt. And it can go all the way around. And then at the leg articulation, you can you got the ball joints right there. And it goes up this high, back this much and whoa so it seems that with these new ball joints at the hips the you can get the leg to pop off kind of easily but it can go back this much you got the thigh cut right there you got the knee that can do the swivel and then it can go back a pretty good amount the ankle goes back that much goes forward this much and you can also get that ankle tilt going on so in terms of articulation this guy is pretty good um here's a closer look at the head sculpts and it has a pretty great likeness to the actor that plays Axe Wolves. Uh, these vintage collection head sculpts are just getting really good. That just looks really nice. And overall, this is just a really great figure. But then we got to talk about the massive flaw that this guy has. And that is his helmet. Nothing in this video wants to focus today. But uh, here's a look at the helmet. It does look really good. The paint apps are really nice. And I think the sculpt itself actually does look good. Please focus. Please focus. There we go. So every uh, you can't move the rangefinder, which is kind of unfortunate. And it is a removable helmet. It is not a swappable head, which is what it should have been because look at this. Now, I think most people can tell that that helmet is a bit too large. I don't think it's insanely large. I'm looking at it on the figure right now. And I really do think that it looks decent. Like it's not the figure isn't ruined. It doesn't look bad or anything like that. It's just, I don't understand why they couldn't have just made a swappable head. As you can see with the Death Watch Mandalorian, they already have that helmet mold. And as I'll show in just a second, you can take the helmet off, pop the head off, and then pop the head off of the Death Watch Mandalorian. It's not wanting to cooperate. <laughs> that thing was on there tight. But then you can take the head from the Death Watch Mandalorian and then put it onto the Axe Wolves body. This one's also going to be a struggle. And there you go. We have very simply and very easily created uh, a solution to another one of Hasbro's problems. I don't know why they couldn't have just done this. They're kind of stupid for not doing it in all honesty. All they had to do was repaint it. And if, I guess if, if you get the two figures and you want to do this and repaint it, you can. I think the helmet, I mean, obviously look at it next to it. The helmet that he actually comes with is way too big, but I still think it looks decent on him. I'm not going to go through the effort of repainting this one, especially when I only have one Death Watch Mandalorian right now. But uh, this would definitely be the better uh, situation. You can even get the Vintage Collection Boba Fett figure, whichever one has the removable helmet. This is the Morak figure. And then you can take off Boba Fett's helmet right here. And then you can take off Axe Wolves helmet and then put on the Boba Fett helmet. And it is a, a bit tighter, but it still fits and it looks way better. The only problem is that you can see his chin poking out just slightly at the bottom. 
So if you were going to have a remove, like if you just had to do a removable helmet with this figure has, bro, you could have just slightly made this helmet larger. Just make it like slightly larger or just reuse it and it'll still look better even if the chin is poking out of the bottom. But really at this point Hasbro should just be including swappable heads with literally every single action figure in Vintage Collection and the Black Series. I think it's ridiculous that we're still having to deal with removable helmets. I get that some people like it. Like it is cool. And sometimes Has Hasbro Hasbro does do it right. But most of the time they do it wrong and the helmet ends up looking too big or something like that. Uh, with Axe Wolves, it's not as bad as some of those Vintage Collection clone troopers. Like with the Captain Grey, I think is this guy's name from that Bad Batch Amazon exclusive four pack. It's really not wanting to focus on him. There we go. Uh, as you can see, it uses that really skinny clone trooper mold and the helmet is way too big. And the helmet's way too big mainly because the mold is too skinny. Like for the body, it's too skinny. But even then, like the helmet is way too big and it goes over the shoulders and everything. So it just makes it look way larger. With the Axe Woves figure, uh, the helmet doesn't go over these shoulders. So it's not like too horribly large it is definitely too tall but at the end of the day i still think it looks pretty okay and now we've got Costca reeves she keeps wanting to fall over like the ankle tilt on her uh, feet is just like not working super well so it's kind of an issue and at least she is deciding to stand up right now when it comes to articulation with the helmet on because with this figure just like with the vintage collection bo katan you do get a swappable head and here's the swappable head. I'll put it on the figure later. But right now, looking at the helmet, you can see it's got these, uh, like, scratch marks and battle damage that's all around the armor. And uh, it is that Night Owl kind of uh, armor design going on that we saw in the Clone Wars. We got the logos on the shoulder pads right there. And then another one on this shoulder pad. Uh, you got the rangefinder on the helmet, which does come down, which is pretty cool. And there are a few issues with uh, the visor paint on mine. As you can see, it's not uh, completely filling in or it's not completely aligned with the mold, but it still looks pretty decent. It's nothing to worry about. The rest of the figure looks really good. It's just that uh, kind of dark blue coloring on the armor with some battle damage and things like that with kind of a dark grayish brown undersuit. And of course, we got the brown belt and there's like a silver buckle over there. And, um, and then we've got the gauntlets, which has some detailing on there, which looks to be painted. That's pretty nice. Um, and then there's the back of the figure, which looks like this. That's where the jetpack goes in. And here's a look at the jetpack itself. It's much smaller compared to the jetpack for the male figures. We then have the blaster pistol. It's the exact same mold and paint apps as the pistol that comes with Axe Wolves. And this is the only other accessory that comes with this figure. You just get the alternate head, the uh, jetpack, and then the pistol. And then we do have a holster for the pistol right here. But it goes in like, it's a lot more tight. It doesn't go in there very well. But here's what it looks like with the pistol and the holster. Taking a look at articulation with the helmet on, we can get it to look down that much, up this much. You got the tilt there, of course, and a bit of a back and forth motion. Uh, the arms can go up this high, the uh, shoulders, the shoulder pads are kind of just attached to the chest armor. They just kind of hang there loosely so you can still get some articulation out of them. The arms can go around, you get the elbow up this much, it can go back um, a little bit, well it can go back quite a bit actually. And then you've got the wrist joints which can go up and down, and the swivel of course, and then it looks like you also have the up and down on the other wrists as well. Then for the chest articulation, we of course got the 360 all the way around. Uh, we can get an ab crunch that goes down a little bit. The belt and the chest armor kind of uh, prohibit uh, too much range of motion going on there. And then you can get it to go back uh, a bit more. And then of course there is some tilt. And then taking a look at the leg articulation, you do have ball joints at the hips. Uh, you can get it to go up this much, out that much. You do get the thigh cuts and the swivel at the knee, the knee goes back that much, and the ankle goes back that much. And you do have ankle tilt on here, it is just kind of annoying to deal with when you're trying to get the figure to stand up. Here's what the head sculpt looks like, it looks pretty good, looks a lot like the actress, almost looks like a real person, just like with the other figures, I mean the vintage collection head sculpts are getting insanely good. 
And I forgot to show it with the Axe Woves figure earlier, but you can get him to hold his helmet, and you can do the same thing with Cosca Reeves. And finally, we have the Death Watch Mandalorian, a bit of an older figure, but I'm still going to take a look at him nonetheless. Uh, when it comes to the accessories, you do get this one blaster rifle here, which I have not seen on any other figures. Uh, I could be wrong. It may not be unique to this figure, but it does look really cool. It doesn't have any paint on it. It is just casted in that black plastic. You've also got this black blaster pistol. It is the same mold as the pistols that came with Costco Reeves and Axe Woves. It's just got some different mold colors and paint. Instead, it's molded in black, and you do get a brown uh, grip. He also has a holster that you can slot the pistol into right here. And then here's another look at his jetpack. This guy, of course, doesn't have any removable helmets or alternate heads or anything like that because he's just supposed to be like a generic soldier, which I do kind of enjoy that. It's, it's not a main character, so it can kind of be whatever you want it to be. So this guy has the exact same articulation as uh, Axe Woves. It's the same exact mold except for the helmet, so I'll show that off a little bit. You can get it to look down that much, up that much, and then you do get a bit of a tilt and a back and forth going on. So yeah, once again, the articulation with this guy is pretty great. All the details on the armor and the undersuit and everything look really good. You got these bits of white markings to kind of break up the colors, and it just looks really cool. I'd have to say just the character design of these Death Watch Mandalorians are some of my favorite that I've seen in Star Wars. I just think all the different shades of blue and these kind of darker grayish colors that we see on the helmet and kind of on the bodysuit just go together really well. It's just a very interesting uh, character to look at very pleasing to the eye and i mean i just i don't know it's just it looks super cool to me um in addition to these white markings you also do get the death watch logo on that shoulder plate right there it's not on the other one and some other details of the paint apps you got a gold buckle on the belt right there uh coming around to the other side of the belt it just continues as brown and then you do get a silver bit on that uh boot band thing right there if it'll focus on it, it keeps wanting to focus on the card back there we go. And those bands on the boots are actually painted brown. You can also get the rangefinder on this figure to go down, which is really nice. That really does need to be on like every Mandalorian, although it's not something that's too upsetting when it doesn't happen. Here's what the back of the figure looks like where the jetpack should be, and I'm going to go ahead and place it back on. The jetpack works the same way as the Axe Woves figure, once again, because it's just the same exact mold. And that was the Death Watch Mandalorian, a super awesome figure and another one that I definitely recommend. So that was my look at the Star Wars Avengers Collection Target exclusive Axe Woves and Cosca Reeves, as well as a bit of an older figure, the Death Watch Mandalorian. All three of these figures are really great. There's nothing bad I can say about any of them except for uh, Axe Woves. His helmet is a bit too big. Other than that, though, these figures are basically perfect. And I would say definitely some of my uh, favorite vintage collection figures that I have. So that about does it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully the video, the visual quality is a bit better on this video. Uh, I know it has, there's a bunch of different factors that go into it, like the lighting and the camera, but it's just been a really inconsistent thing for me with where I upload it and then it looks slightly different. And then I went back and checked the Republic Commando video and now it looks like better than it did before. And so I have no idea what's going on, but... Hopefully this video looks pretty good. Uh, if you have any tips for that kind of stuff, uh, definitely put it in the comments below if you feel like it. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.